hello hello and welcome back to my youtube channel i'm the international medic as you already know this is your go-to channel for anything medical school related today i'll be talking about mmi interviews most of you already know what this is but today i'll just be focusing mainly on Brunel medical school the kind of things they'll be looking for in your mmi interview the kind of things to expect and my tips and tricks for what to do when you have your MMI interviews and also more importantly but I will ask you some questions for my viewers thank you to those that were willing to ask questions so without further ado let's get straight into the video first thing first let's talk about MMI interviews as some of you and most of you already know this is a multiple mini interview but for those of you that already know what this is please just give me a minute let me explain for our newcomers so the structure of MMI interviews at Brunel University that typically consists of a series of stations each lasting around five to eight minutes each station candidates are presented with a scenario and or a task and are assessed on various competencies and listen to this carefully please because i'm going to list down a couple of things i think you'll be assessed on and some of them you might not know that people will even check on it so this is specific for bruno i don't know about other medical schools so for instance they're going to check your communication skills your ethical reasoning teamwork empathy that's a typical thing that you they'll look for in um, mmi interviews but the one that is specific for many international students is your ability to speak english not a lot of people realize this data interpretation dedication to healthcare ethical and problem solving abilities all of these will also be assessed now let's get to some tips for mmi interviews at Brunner medical school so tip number one practice your communication skills mmi scenarios often require you to effectively communicate your thoughts ideas and responses under pressure practice speaking clearly confidently and concisely like it's enough to think that you're confident and everything but you won't know how you are until you're under that pressure and you're under that time limit so please please practice it practice makes perfect so tip number two familiarize yourself with ethical dilemmas mmi interviews can include scenarios that test your ethical reasoning and judgment stay updated on current healthcare issues and be prepared to discuss ethical considerations so I can dive into this a little bit more because for me how I practiced all these ethical scenarios and trust me with my brain MMI there were a lot of ethical scenarios I'm not saying that's what's gonna that's what's gonna happen for you because mine was I did mine like three years ago and I'm in 2024 where I practiced this was basically I went to places like my UCAT prep why is one UCAT prep I went to the situational judgment section I was just practicing questions ethical scenarios I went to medi portal looked at their questions and samples practiced it I also read the guide for what it is to be a good doctor. I'll show the link somewhere. Can, I'll put the link in the description so you can also read it as well. Basically, I read a lot of things of what it is to be a good doctor, ethical scenarios, I learned about euthanasia, different scenarios, ethically gray scenarios here and there. So just practice and practice it, and eventually, the more information you have, the better and the more equipped you are to answer any question that comes your way. It's that simple. So, tip number three your time management. With each MMI station being relatively short, Time management is crucial. Practice spacing yourself and ensure you address all aspects of the scenario within the allocated time. The next tip is embrace diversity and inclusivity. You know, this is very, very important for Brunel. Like we have whole lectures based on just diversity, like social determining factors. Like you're gonna know, like it's very important for Brunel. I don't know how much to stress, how I can stress it anymore, but you need to know this. This is what might make you stand out being aware of the different socio-economical factors that affect different people in the UK. Like, think of stuff like that. It might make you stand out, you don't know. So tip number five, stay calm and composed. Like, like again, nothing much to add to this. I believe that if you can find your own way of staying calm and composed during your interview, you'll be able to answer different questions, you'll be able to do see things clearly and give a better and concise answer. And you sound more confident that way. Breathe and then answer the question. There won't be anything wrong with that. But before I end all of the, the whole video, I just wanted to address certain questions that some students asked me on my um, um, YouTube page. But before I go into that, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Help us reach um, a lot of subscribers. Yeah, there's no limited amount of su subscribers that I want. I want as many as possible. So please help me out. It just shows support. It just shows that there are people that actually care about this information and find it useful. And um, I feel like moving on from now, I'm going to be adding more about my personal life, like things I do for fun. Because I feel like this is just Brunel heavy and people don't realize that I have a life outside outside my Brunel life. It's not a lot, it's not a lot of life, but 
it's something so yeah apart from medicine it's like i do different stuff so i just want to add that and just be me it's my it's my youtube channel so i digress let's go straight to the question so the first question is the person wanted to know if Brunel university helps in us mle process and its preparations i did ask a staff member so i'll just say what they told me they said that the school will offer guidance on the us mle assessments the career advisors will discuss individual needs and provide advice on um, on approved preparatory resources including review texts, practice question banks and online courses. Please note that access to USMLE and MCCQE examinations will be available at the time when the first cohort graduates. For more information, please contact bmssupport.ac.uk. Long story short, past papers won't be available until the first cohort, my cohort graduates and um also they'll help you with different stuff help you applying help you prepare stuff like that so kind of straightforward okay next question this person is actually just talk asking about tbl whether um i think the main question is if there will be sessions or students or if students will also get lectures like traditional teachings and they just want to know about tbl in general like if you're from bruno and you're watching this video you already know about this enough i'm just going to summarize it give you a brief summary so TBL is basically like a group of five to six people learning together for your basically the whole academic year. Basically, you're giving information preparatory material to go home, read and prepare for your test, which is just there to see if you understand what you actually read. And then when you do the test, teachers then actually answer your questions that you might have because you will definitely fail some questions. It's part of learning. And then they explain certain concepts to you or they ask you questions to make sure you understand the concept straightforward simple then now i think towards the main question which is if we actually do a normal lecture i think we only do that with histology and we do that once do it like two to three times in one academic year and that's your first year second year so it's not a lot so more times than not like you'll be doing tbl that's basically is basically tbl so the only time we do actually do tbl tbl and we're doing lecture based stuff is when we're doing histology but one thing you need to understand is that i'll just basically break it down so you know how in medicine you have five years in your first year you're going to have tbl basically day in day out for the whole academic year you're not escaping tbl in your second year you're going to have tbl for first term and second term we don't do semesters here we do first term second term third term so you're going to have tbl for first term and second term and then in third term you're going to be doing mainly research at least for our cohort like for now you're going to be doing research you won't really be doing the test the mini test like irats and you won't really be in class to do tbl so you just be doing research like research projects and stuff like that individual ones so um actually i might do a video on that let me just put that to the side that's your first and second year in your third year to fifth year which are your clinical years for basically almost every medical school out there you're going to be taking rotation so you're basic you're barely going to be in brunel at all to study you're going to but you're going to still come to do tbl but it's going to be like for a whole week within like in a month so for every month you come to brunel for just to do tbl for like a week just to learn what you're going to see in the rotation just to like like a debrief session before you go to your rotation in the clinical um in your clinical years in the hospital long story short you're doing tbl most of your life in brunel that's how the learning is hopefully you found this information and video helpful if you did please like i said again subscribe to youtube channel comment down below let me know what you need to know and i'll help you out so take care enjoy peace